how much do Asians in central London make? Rosie. <laughs> wow. So, slightly different video today. We're going to be answering some of your questions together. I'm here with Rosie from DDRE. Rosie, do you want to tell us a bit about yourself? I would love to. Thank you for having me, Bart. I'm Rosie Walden. I am a luxury real estate advisor based here in London, working internationally with a brokerage called DDRE Global. So I do everything from rentals to sales and a little bit of commercial as well. Great. Well, thanks for coming onto the channel. Pleasure to have you here. And uh, without much further ado, let's get straight into your questions. But just before we do, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any videos that we're posting. I'm gonna start posting twice a week now, so make sure you absolutely get involved. Turn the notification bell on so that you know every time that I'm posting. And uh, most importantly, make sure you wait right until the end where Rosie and I are gonna talk numbers and uh, reveal what potential earnings or our actual earnings can actually be in the real estate industry. Starting with the questions from Instagram, thank you so much guys for sending them in and make sure obviously to follow me on there as well. Let's start with this one um, from Shay. What does your day look like? Do you want to start with that one? Oh, I love that question. Um, I think the thing that I love about my job, and I, you'll probably agree, is that no two days look the same. So there's so much variety and I don't know, you just kind of have to like roll with what each day throws at you. But I would say in general, my days start fairly early, um, six, seven in the morning, sometimes a little bit earlier than that. I like to start the day with a little bit of Pilates if I can squeeze it in there. Um, and then I usually head into the office. Our office is in Marlebone. Um, and we'll meet, have a team meeting, go through what we're kind of working on, any new instructions, new listings. Um, and then I'll usually hit the phones, do a few calls. I'd say that's quite standard in like yeah. agency in general. 100%. Catch up with clients, um, just be in touch with other agents, know what's going on, what's coming onto the market. Um, and then it's usually a mix of previews, new developments, uh, viewings. I'm sort of out and about pretty much all day. I'm in my car, hopping from place to place. And because we are sort of all over London and we're not confined to one postcode, um, you really are like in your car. Traveling a lot. Traveling yeah. a lot, the whole day. So yeah, it's quite mobile. Um, but out for most of the day, definitely a bit of content in there as well. 100%. Some days more than others. Um, and then I kind of sit down, go through some more emails, round off the day. Um, I like to kind of unwind in the evening. So either like go to the gym, see some friends, have a dinner, a bit of networking. And then I'm usually doing more emails um, until like midnight, 1am and then I crash out and go to bed. So interesting, yeah. How I mean, about you? Do you think that's quite similar? I think or? that's literally exactly the same. Um, <laughs> I'm like, it's, it's so like unique a, and different. Every no, day is I, a new I, adventure. Well, I'd say, I'd say it's exactly the same. Obviously, um, we have slightly different worlds. We have different things, different clients, different things to do, but it's roughly the same. I don't start the day with Pilates, for example. I could never do that. You don't? Uh, no, you should. No, unfortunately not. I mean, no, definitely not. Um, similar early-ish start, get into the office. Um, we do things slightly differently in, in the fact that we actually, uh, you know, start calling clients and trying to pitch for new instructions and get some properties on for sale before we run our sales meeting. Our sales meeting is at 10 a.m. We all get together and run through everything that we're up to and um, all the things that are going in the market and have a great chat. And then from 10 to midday, again, we're just bashing the phones, doing all the sort of hard work and boring stuff that um, nobody ever really notices and then midday onwards is where the fun starts with the previews with going to meet clients and doing networking and viewings and trying to tie up offers and all that sort of stuff and so I think uh, my day is yeah just consists of the core functions of any agent plus a bit of the business side of things as well calling accountants trying to hire new people, paying for staff, like that's, I guess, the boring stuff that <laughs> A comes lot of paying role. for staff. A lot of paying for staff. Um, and uh, yeah, in the evenings, again, it's just the case. I mean, I spend most evenings in the office, so my working day is quite long, I would say. It's just because we're such a new business, like there is a million things to do, and I'm still working on my own structure in my head. So it's a bit all over the place, but actually very similar to yours in some ways, and I'm sure very different in others too. So yeah. Advice from Jeremy, Jeremy Owen, who I used to work with. Thank you very much for your question. Uh, advice to someone starting in the industry. Why don't you start with this uh, one? Why don't I start? 
So I'm actually very new to the industry, and so I feel like believe it or not, it's yeah, quite crazy yeah. to think about it. Yeah. So I think I can I can advise on this quite well. I mean, um, what I did personally is I just threw myself into everything uh, much earlier than I should have done, really, and and you know, burnt a few bridges here and there, did a few things, and but ultimately the my sort of learning trajectory has accelerated massively as a result. So I started off by. I mean, I fell into property very randomly just by uh, messaging someone on LinkedIn and then having a phone call and then two weeks later moving to London. So it was all a bit um, random, but actually I think for anyone coming into the industry, it's about um, building really good habits from day one um, in terms of the boring stuff, you know, following up with emails, getting your calls done, doing all of the sort of core functions away from the glamorous viewings and deals and everything else. And if you get all of that right from the start and get some sort of structure in place and just keep rinsing and repeating that, the good stuff will, all, will follow eventually. It took me six months to do my first deal and I was at a big corporate agency where there was so many properties to sell and so many buyers to speak to. So even in that sort of setup, it took me so long to actually figure it all out. So I would say it's all about patience and perseverance, setting up the right structure and systems right from the start um, and then just rinsing, repeating, keeping your head up and, and just, you know, being patient with it because it's definitely not a quick win sort of environment. You can't just do it, come in and do a sale, you might do, um, but it's very, very rare for that to happen. And so it's, yeah, getting the systems right, learning from someone that's far more experienced than you and just letting them tell you exactly how it's done, um, adding your own spice to it. And then again, being patient and persevering. That's my biggest thing that I say to all of my agents. And that's what I was taught when I first started as well, because it's a really, really long game. I totally agree. I would say as well, I think like, as you said, having a good mentor. So if you kind of visualize where you'd ideally like to be, and that's not always that straightforward to know what you want to do, but if you can kind of see where you'd like to be and then pick people who are at that point and know that you're not going to get there overnight, but look at how they did it. And, and honestly, I think like copying is a great strategy. If you look at someone who you think is successful and they're doing what you'd ideally like to be doing one day, look at how they got there and follow those steps and one day eventually you will make it as well and I think mentors it's crucial to have a good mentor especially in this industry it can be really tough um, and that's that second point as well as resilience like you might not do a deal for months and months so you need to be resilient and know that it will come and just putting in the hard work day after day and being consistent and I would also just add don't underestimate the power of networking you might not have a network to begin with you might not think that you have a network to begin with, but if you tell people what you do, and if you're constantly you know, showing it in your own way, whether that's through social media or when you're out talking to people, letting people know what you do, um, and just go out and meet people. Um, if you want to be working in kind of like luxury property or super prime property, think about where those clients are and how you can put yourself in those places. It doesn't need to be you know, by getting a membership to a fancy members club. It could be something more simple than that. Maybe there's like a rowing club or a tennis club that they join or somewhere where, um, you know, you go for talks by inspiring people and put yourself in those places and you'll build your network and your network is ultimately the most valuable thing, I think, in our business. Okay, so quick question from Vanessa. Who would you like to work with in the industry, be it an old colleague or someone that you've met? Rosie. Putting me on the spot. Yeah. Um, I mean, I always say that like the American agents, I feel like they're just five years ahead of us and we can learn so much from them here in the UK. Um, and our CEO, Daniel, does have a really good relationship with Ryan Sarhant. I've yet to meet him um, or do a deal with him, but hopefully I think that would be iconic for me. I'd be really, really intrigued by everything that he's kind of set up and the way they work. And I feel like they're leading the way in terms of what we're now doing here in the UK as well. So I'd say him. Absolutely. I take huge inspiration from Ryan Serhan. Obviously been there and watched all the million dollar listing stuff. And so that's a, that's a really good one. I didn't think as far as America, um, but actually something a slightly more simple. Uh, my first ever boss, Daniel Killick, um, I think I'd love to work with him again. He is the, the one person that's actually kept me very calm and uh, like I, I don't know, the level of confidence that the, he gave me as a new agent coming into the industry was uh, absolutely crazy. The way he operates as his manager, 
and just made everything so uh, enjoyable and simple for everyone. Nowadays, I'm actually quite stressed, um, but then I had like 12 deals in my pipeline at one point, doing 15 viewings a day, and it was all very, very hectic. Far more hectic than it is now, but actually, I've never felt more calm, and I've never felt more organized. The guy was just so good at making us all feel good. Um, we'd call in the evening, we'd go for <clears throat> runs on the weekend in Richmond Park, and actually, that human side to Daniel, it's something I value more than any sales tips that I've ever got, any deal closing techniques, anything money related. It's the human side that actually make the job, made the job so, so, so much more enjoyable and easy. And so if I could collaborate with him in the future again and, uh, uh, you know, work together, that would be awesome. That's the one person that I would definitely, definitely want to work with. Question from Lewis. What's a persistent headache you deal with as an estate agent? How long have you got? That's my, uh, that's my answer. Uh, no, we are privileged to be under a lot of pressure. That's my thing. My biggest headache is time. There is not enough time in the day to do everything that I want to do. There are a million people I want to speak to, don't have time to do it. A million clients that I want to email, can't do it. A million videos I want to film for you guys, can't do it. Because time is a hugely uh, valued commodity in our business and I think that the biggest headache that I deal with is not being able to manage that time. And uh, again, I see it as a huge privilege um, and pressure is a privilege, but ultimately um, it just creates, yeah, it's very difficult, very difficult, especially when you're trying to start a business and still keep trying to be an, an agent. It's, um, it's something that I've found quite hard actually, you know, hiring people, getting them set up for success, getting them doing deals, but then actually trying to do a deal or two here myself. It's, yeah, none of that actually made any sense, but it's time. That's my biggest headache. Time <laughs> is like um, a pain, a daily pain, always, always, always just, um, yeah, back to back from appointment to appointment. I think it's, uh, it's one of the most difficult things about the job. Anyone can negotiate. Anyone can market, anyone can do you know, the core functions of agency, but actually to be able to manage your time properly, to be as efficient as possible. You know, someone like Ryan Serhant, who runs like 15 million businesses and still somehow gets everything done in the same day. I, you know, hands down to someone like that because I feel like I'm like the busiest person in the world. Um, when I'm really not, it comes down to time management and what you do with your time. And that's my biggest like work on at the moment and a huge, 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 huge headache um, constantly. So I don't How know to be you... in every single place at the, at same, the same time. time. Yeah, and just do everything. And it's, um, yeah, precious is a privilege, but it's also a big headache. That's the way I see it, yeah. Okay, I interpreted that question completely differently. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm gonna give you a headache, but for me, I mean, it's a funny one. But I, so I also work as a search agent. That's one of the things that I help clients with. So they'll retain me to help them find either a rental property or a property to buy. And the biggest headache for me, um, which is an educational process, but I get asked a lot, can you find me a deal? What's the best deal on the market right now? No. Um, I only want to buy something that is a deal. And if I hear those words, I'm like, <laughs> okay, let's just look at this differently. I think if you are looking for an investment property, then it's different. If you're not going to live there yourself, if you're looking for like a buy to let, of course you're looking for something where the numbers stack up, or if you're going to develop something, it has to make sense. So I get that. If somebody is looking for a family home or a forever home or, you know, they're buying an apartment for themselves for the next three to five years to live in, then I can't understand this obsession around getting a deal because particularly in prime central London where values are much higher than they are in almost every other place in the world, you're not really buying something because it's good value. You're buying something, similarly to when you buy art, I don't know if you would disagree with me or not, but if you buy art, you should buy something you love. And I think with real estate, it's, it's kind of the same thing. You wanna buy an asset which is going to hold its value, obviously increase with inflation, but it's a long-term, you should have a long-term view. And I don't know, I just think certain properties in London are rare assets and if you don't see the value, someone else will, and you could miss out. So if you're sitting there waiting for a deal, even in a market like now, where it's a little bit more challenging and prices are kind of adjusting, I've had clients looking with me for the last kind of like, say, three to six months, and we started that search and that journey 
you know, with those words, I'm looking for a deal. And then they missed out on a couple of really, really good properties because I was telling them like, look, this is really rare, it rarely comes to the market and it will fetch a good price and it will achieve a high price per square foot. And sure enough, they sold. And even in a tough market, they sold within a week or a couple of weeks. Um, and I think that's the educational process that I then take clients on to show them where value kind of is and, and how that's determined. So for me, that's a little bit of a headache when I hear that, but I understand that everybody's coming from a different um, perspective. Last question, the juicy one that you've all been waiting for right from the start, I'm sure. Piers, how much do agents in central London make? Rosie. <laughs> well, if you're self-employed and you decide to start your own business, then the answer is a big fat zero until you do a deal. <laughs> yeah. So I think probably similarly in both of the way that our businesses are structured, we're not actually paid a salary. Um, we're purely based on commission. Our pay is purely based on commission. So it entirely depends on how many properties you're selling or renting and what kind of business you're bringing in. Yeah, it's, it massively depends. That's the um, main thing. Like an average high street agent might make between uh, 25,000 pounds all the way up to 125,000 maybe in really senior positions where you're banking a lot and doing like over a million pounds in commission. But um, in the broker world, it's like, you know, from zero up to millions. Um, I think it would be best to maybe give an example of a property, like a one million pound flat on a two and a half percent fee is 25,000 pounds in commission. If you're in a brokerage and you take whatever, 50% of that, um, then you will get 12 and a half thousand pounds, which is a lot of money. If you're at a corporate agency, you'll get 10% of that, which is two and a half thousand pounds. Um, if you completely work for yourself, obviously you get £25,000, but then you've got the costs of the marketing and the portals and all of these other things and it actually then whittles down to not that much money. Um, but then you might do a lot because you have employees doing deals for you. And so it's ultimately quite complicated. But um, I think an average agent in London will make £40,000 and really good agents make multiple six figures, maybe sometimes even seven for the business owners. So like in any industry, it just depends. I think. Yeah, definitely. I'd say like the difference as well is that if you're an employed agent, you obviously have that base salary, so you have yeah. that security, and then you're making a smaller commission on top. Um, for us, it's a little bit different, but the potential yeah. and the reward could be a lot more. 100%. Yeah, with a lot of hard work. That's the main thing. That's what keeps us motivated. Yeah. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the Q&A. Thank you so much, Rosie, for coming on the channel. Really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Uh, absolutely no problem there at all. Guys, make sure that before you click off this video, you subscribe, leave a comment, like, turn on the notification bell so you're here for the next Q&A or vlog or whatever else we're doing. And without much further ado, I'll see you next time. Bye.